Hi guys, it's Kind. Welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I showed you how to get this zombie Cruella de Vil makeup look. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I styled Cruella's iconic black and white hair. You know, I see a lot of people just wearing the long black and white wig and doing, you know, this pretty glam Cruella de Vil. But I wanted to serve the big, frizzy, messy, shoulder-length Cruella de Vil hair. And I'm going to show you just how I got it. So this video is sponsored by Donald Love Hair. I've used their wigs before on my channel and they're always super thick and great quality and heat resistant too. But I didn't bother curling this one because it already had some nice waves built into it. Um, but the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm securing her down onto my mannequin head and I'm gonna give it a bit of a haircut. Just chopping off a little bit at a time until I get a cut that's just a little bit past my shoulders. I mean, obviously this is not on me so I don't know where my shoulders are. Just kind of guessing and cutting in very broad strokes. I ain't a hairdresser, okay? but cutting it short will help us to get a lot of height at the top because long hair is always going to be weighed down. So if you cut it shorter, just past the shoulders, when you back comb it, it'll sit kind of just right above your shoulders, which is about where we want the finished style to sit in the end. The next step is to cut some layers into this hair. If there were any layers in this wig to begin with, they would have been chopped right off when I cut the hair so short. So we want to give it layers so that we can see some more dimension when we tease it all up. Cruella de Vil's hair is kind of 80s, it's punk rock, so I didn't worry about making it look pretty and perfect. It's gonna be curly anyway, so it's hard to fail here since the curls disguise most of the mistakes. I took some strands at the surface of the hair and kind of cut at like an angle going downward, so the, a, a little bit of the hair got a shorter cut, and, but most of it remained long. The idea is just to get different lengths in here, mostly at the back of the hair on its surface, not on the inside. And this is gonna aid in giving us volume and dimension because there are gonna be longer curls and shorter curls. Of course we don't want so many different lengths that some hair is like close to the scalp. The layers should start near like halfway down the hair. Then again I could be doing this totally wrong. <laughs> I do not know how to cut real hair but you know what by the looks of it neither does Cruella de Vil. Her hair looks like it was done by like one of the Dalmatians that has arthritis. Okay so if it doesn't look pretty then you're on the right track. At least that's what I tell myself. The next step is to tease this all. I'm taking a small strand at a time, starting at the hairline and then packing that hair down to the base. So I have my brush like around the halfway point, halfway because I only want to pack down the roots and not the whole length of hair. And then I just brush down to the base over and over until I get a little cloud of hair there. And then I repeat this process over the entire wig. For the hair that's near the hairline, you want to make sure you tease on the back of the hair so that you can smooth out the front. Now since we cut our layers into it, it's going to be hard to pack down as much hair as we want to because it's hard to hold in your hand. But you're just going to have to take your time here to make sure you get every strand. What you should start to see forming is a big cloud of hair that's almost too hard to control, but the tips of the hair should still be visible because we're only teasing at the roots. It's good to have a lot of clips on hand so that you can keep the cloud of hair out of the way once you're done teasing it. That way you can get at the bottom parts of the wig and you can make sure you don't have any missed spots because it really is obvious in the finished look. Something you'll kind of understand more if you've styled lots of wigs is that newer wigs are a lot harder to work with. Sometimes it just feels like the brush just doesn't want to tease them. A wig that's really been through it a couple of times is a lot nicer to work with. But in our case, the wig is brand new. So one thing you can do here is use hairspray to help get some more control of the hair and give it some more texture so it's not so thin feeling and so that you have a little bit more grit to brush through when you're teasing it. Once everything is all teased out and the hair looks big and huge, the next step is going to be smoothing it out. So I mainly smooth the hair on the hairline that's framing our face, um, brushing outwards. 
This is the most important part of it, so I brush that back and also brush the back of the head. But I'm not going to smooth out the back of this head as much because I want you to be able to see those layers and I want you to be able to see all the texture and dimension that I created with a haircut. I don't want to see the rattiness of the back combing and that little cloud of hair I was talking about. I don't want to see that. I do want to see some messiness of the curls, so I, did, I definitely didn't smooth it out that much. And what you'll notice is I always use two hands to brush the hair when I'm smoothing it out. The brush will be in one hand and with my other hand, I'm holding onto the hair that I'm brushing so I don't pull it all the way out. So I'm anchoring that root down. So I'm essentially just brushing out the tips so they can be smooth. That way I don't disturb the wig too much. After smoothing it all out, I just used my fingers to adjust it the way I wanted, making sure there was that nice line splitting the black and the white. And I also took a little center front strand of hair and let a nice little skunk stripe of white lay on top of the black, just to add some flair and some spice to it. And you can let the natural curls that are built into the wig do all the work for you. Styling wigs is all about seeing what the hair wants to do and seeing which way the waves are telling you to go and just going with the flow. It's not like painting your vision onto a flat canvas which just absorbs everything you do to it. The unique thing about hair, even synthetic hair, is that it can feel like it has a mind of its own at times and it doesn't always do what you want, even if you're really experienced. Sometimes you have to be rough with it, but in most cases you have to be flexible with it and it'll work with you. When you see the final style start to come together, you can lock things in with little bursts of hairspray, still kind of adjusting the swoopy bang, judging up the back. Wait until it's absolutely perfect and the way you want to before you seal it in with a final coat that includes a hot blow dryer. Because once you add that much hairspray, it almost becomes a helmet of hair that won't move, but it will be hard to adjust. So don't do that final stop of hairspray until you're sure that there's nothing else you want to change about it. This is a finished look. I absolutely loved it. Of course, you can apply this technique to any wig in any color. I just happened to do it to Cruella DeVille. If you want to see how I did this makeup, just check my most recent upload before this. And if you want to see how to make a jacket like this, I have a faux fur coat sewing tutorial on my channel. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more drag videos. And you guys, this is it for all of my Halloween 2017 content, but I'll be putting out videos like this all year round as always. So subscribe to be part of it. I always appreciate it. Thank you so much for all of the love and support you guys have shown me this past month. And especially to those of you who have been sending in your recreations and your drawings. Um, you know, it's occurring to me that some of you think I'm way prettier than I actually am. I don't know if I should be flattered or insecure that I don't really look like this. Anyway, thank you again to Donna Love Hair for sponsoring this tutorial. I loved it and I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. Let me know what you want to see next from me now that October is coming to an end and I'll see you guys all in my next upload, which I can't wait to share with you guys what it is, um, but you're just going to have to stay tuned and wait to find out. Bye guys. Thank you